Yes, so I am Dr. Mani Vasagan, a pediatric neurologist from Coimbatore. So now we will discuss about the metabolic disorders in children just in nutshell. And actually these are the children you have problem with the um, what we call as inborn errors of metabolism. They have a problem with uh, uh, carbohydrate, protein, fat or maybe a, a problem with vitamins or purine, pyrimidines or maybe a, uh, problem with organelles such as uh, lysosomal, peroxomal or mitochondrial disorders. So basically the, um, uh, we see, we do see children suffering from um, so what we call as um, uh, sequelae of uh, static encephalopathy and, uh, and we have to basically differentiate between uh, sequelae of static encephalopathy and uh, neurometabolic disorders. The basic difference between these two groups is groups um, usually are and uh, number one static encephalopathy that means say, any uh, uh, problem with the during delivery just prior to delivery and or soon after delivery will affect the nervous system and especially the brain and uh, they will have um, all the milestones will be delayed uh, for quite some time and um, uh, but there will not be any uh, re deterioration and they will gain milestone but in, in little bit on a a delay. Uh, so, they, they may not occur in other words they may not occur the milestone in normally. So, what other children will do but they will occur for example if they normally the children will uh, attain head control around uh, 3 to 4 months means these children may attain head control around 8 months or so. So, there will be a delay in acquiring all the milestone and this is a classical sequelae of um, uh, any insult to the brain during prior or at the during the delivery just after delivery. This is what is uh, what we call as a sequelae of static encephalopathy. So, in contrast uh, these children, those children uh, suffering from metabolic disorders, they may normal till about a particular age then at that time at the point of time there may be insult because of these metabolic disorders in the various um, um, which I mentioned earlier. So, as a result there will be a um, deterioration. So, they may lose milestone one, down, one after other. Um, so, ultimately there will be a regression what you call as a regression or deterioration from what they had for example with the child um, previously was able to walk, talk, run, jump, they may not able to sit even, they may not um, finally they may be bedridden and there may be uh, seizure what you call the fits and there may be mental retardation, there may be abnormal movements, uh, there may be unsteadiness or uh, there may be muscle weakness or other systems such as a cardiac system or um, abdomen may be affected. This is a basic difference between the sequelae of static encephalopathy and progressive disorder that is a sequelae of um, what you uh, observe in uh, inborn errors of metabolism. Yeah. So, for example, say I got a child infant for example, the child delivered normally and there is no perinatal depression that means the delivery and soon after delivery, during delivery, after delivery everything went on well. Child developed normally the head control was achieved around 4 to 5 months but the problem started there. So, at the at around 5 to 6 months the child developed a seizure that is fits and there is a startle response what you call this exaggerated startle response any sound the child re reacted in a differently in a vigorously that is uh, what we call this uh, startle response. This will give us a clue for a particular disease what is known as a test sex disease. This is a um, GM2 gangliosidosis, the, it is one of the sphingolipidosis and uh, so here in addition to the exaggerated startle, the exergence will be more and if you observe the eye there will be cherry red spot. So, a combination of exaggerated startle response, large head and cherry red spot in the eye will give us a clue that particular child is suffering from a, 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 what a disease known as a tay sachs disease. It is um, um, there will be a progressive deterioration after that and finally, a child may die after quite a few months or few years. Usually, this will be con confirmed by the enzyme assay that is a exosaminase A uh, that particular enzyme will be deficient or almost absent in these children.